Just when you thought Ohio State was done with the coaching staff shakeups, here they go again. This one, I don't think by Ohio State's choice. That's Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. These are snap judgments. They are brought to you by Byers Auto. Longtime veteran Ohio State running backs coach Tony Alford is leaving for the other side of the rivalry. He is heading to Michigan in the middle of spring break and after spring practice has already started for the Buckeyes. Berm, I don't know any other word for it except this one is uh, pretty shocking. Yeah, that is the word. It's 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 shocking in the timing. It's not shocking, and it's shocking in the destination, I suppose, more so than it is in the decision. We we talked about this back in uh, January. There was a lot of conversation about Tony Alford and whether or not his future at Ohio State, uh, or whether or not he wanted to have a future at Ohio State, whether or not Ohio State thought it was time to move on from him. He's been there, as you've mentioned, since 2015. Um, like he's is a longtime assistant that doesn't generally happen at a place like Ohio State. Um, and, and it it is shocking. It's it's shocking because Tony Alford had other opportunities this offseason to go to Notre Dame or USC or Miami and um, you know, chose to stick around in Columbus and then this opportunity to go be the run game coordinator in Ann Arbor uh for a, a slight raise, it, it does seem to be um that's harder to swallow for a number of reasons. And uh I mean, the timing of it certainly makes it uh, peculiar. And then you add the the destination on top of the timing and it becomes um, it's hard to see it from a perspective that Ohio State fans are going to be like, OK, with it. I mean, I'm not sure that they should be yeah. this. You look at everything you're in the middle of March, like and coaches, people in their professional lives can make whatever decision they want. But I think given the way that the the offseason settled down. Ohio State making a decision to stick with Tony Alford. Tony Alford making a decision to stick around with Travion Henderson and have Quinshawn Judkins come in and Dallin Hayden. You go throughout the entire offseason. You lay out all those plans. You get into the first two practices of spring. At that point, you assume that that's pretty much locked in. That's the way that um, you know the professional nature of the business usually works out once you get to that point. Now, it can change, and it has changed for Ohio State and with Tony Alford specifically. So now they're going to have to go out uh, the Buckeyes and Ryan Day and find their own solution, both to be ready for a practice next Tuesday in the short run and in the long term to find a full time uh, fix for this with someone who's been uh, in the program for a long time and with Ryan Day for his entire head coaching tenure. Um, it you just I think there's there's maybe some element here where you mentioned all the off season opportunities that Tony Alford had this year. That's been the case for several years in a row, whether that's LSU or Notre Dame or other schools reaching out. And Ohio State had always made it, you know, comfortable in terms of comp compensation, keeping Tony Alford among the best paid running backs coaches in the country, allowing him to, you know, there were different titles and it wasn't always like sometimes they were taken away, sometimes they were added, but he was making almost eight hundred thousand dollars with Ohio State over the last several years. And, you know, Maybe there's some part for Ohio State where they got tired of having to make those negotiations or, or go through them every single offseason, or there was going to be an offer that Tony Alford felt like he couldn't refuse, but it never felt to me like Michigan or this amount of money that's being talked about would be the one that that prompted that, and certainly not in the middle of March. No, uh, that's why it, it's hard. It, it feels somewhat personal at that point. I mean, if you're being honest, uh, that's not... You hope it's not that way, but it does feel like at some point you you had opportunities, and to choose that one certainly feels different. Um, the money, as you said, like that we've heard, the number we've heard is not uh, exponentially larger than what he was uh, being offered to stay at Ohio State uh, this off season and and heading into this uh, spring and summer. So, yeah, I, <laughs> it's I don't mean to be speechless, but I don't really understand how a, a coach makes that decision at this time. Um, but as you said, it's done. And so now Ohio State, as they've done since January, has to react. And so the Ryan Day has done an incredible job this offseason winning the next thing. And so now uh, winning the next thing becomes important again uh, because this feels like the second time in the last five months that Sharon Moore has beaten Ryan Day. And that's, mm -hmm. that's uh, you know, that that's that's the truth. I mean, th it's March 13th and your running back coach has been pulled out from under you by your biggest rival. Like that's, that's hard to swallow. Yeah. And so when you focus on the next, like, I don't think Berm that, and I won't, I won't pretend 
to have a list of candidates for Ohio State. Uh, and sort of my understanding is that they're still in the process of beginning that, of trying to find out which direction they could go. You have coaching agencies and the coaching circles sort of scrambling the Jets here to see who would be in the mix, who would want to leave. And I think pretty much anybody would if, given what Ohio State has invested in their assistant coaches in the running back spot specifically, they should be able to offer offer a contract that would be appealing to anybody. And if you get them in place quickly, then you get a chance to come in and work with Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson and Dallin Hayden and James Peoples and Sam Williams-Dixon. I think a lot of coaches are going to be uh, willing to jump at that opportunity as well. So the timing is not ideal. Most coaches aren't looking to move in March, but Tony Alford just showed and proved that it can be done. But who are those people? Like You and I could come up with a list of five names that may make sense or have coaching ties to Chip Kelly or, or Ryan Day. Uh, but I, I would be being dishonest if I said any of them were realistic options for Ohio State because I don't believe that they were prepping for this once spring practice started. Yeah, I mean, this is a decision and a discussion that went from zero to 100 in the last 48 hours, really. there We had seen Tony Alford's name mentioned uh, if in the Michigan search, but I, I think initially you sort of just dismiss it because – there are no, there's no world where it makes sense uh, for him or Ohio State to to have this happen right now, to make a lateral move, to do the, you know, to go to the other side of the rival, like uh, all that stuff. So you just sort of brush that away, um, and now here you are again. The Ohio State coaches are not on spring break, so let's be clear, like they they're working this week, but the players, uh, no, there there are some spring breakers out there. Well, they're 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 not like at the beach this week so let's just they, they may be taking a little time away but i don't think ryan day's not because i know he was in the building <laughs> on, on monday uh so like you you have this discussion i think really has ramped up in the last like i said 48 hours or so and now you have like that preliminary that preliminary group of people you're like okay what about this guy what like that list is going to be long but it, it is ohio state um, and like every other position coach that comes available or the offensive coordinator search that became available or Jim Knowles in the defensive coordinator spot a couple of years ago, like Ryan Day and Ohio State can go get anyone they want, really. Um, the, the thing that makes it difficult is it's March 13th. So yeah. you have a lot of people who are entrenched in, in their current program that are maybe not willing to make that move in the middle of spring, uh, spring football. So um, because of, as you mentioned earlier, like it does feel slightly, uh, as a professional courtesy issue, um, that's something you'd worry about, but it's Ohio state. If they offer that same amount of money to pretty much any running back coach in the country, they're going to be, um, given an opportunity to have a conversation. So, uh, yeah, the, we could go over names and, and pick people, you know, uh, Ryan day. I think wants to maybe get a little younger at that position, at that position coach spot. So we'll see. Um, but again, we've talked about this before. Like he doesn't have the world's biggest black book when it comes to uh, his coaching tree. But now you have Chip Kelly here, and the entire discussion when the new offensive coordinator was hired the first time was that the offensive coordinator was going to be able to come in and choose his own assistants outside of Brian Hartline. We've had that conversation before. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would look to see who Chip Kelly maybe has relationships with or who he's worked with in the past as the starting point. And then maybe you are Ohio State and you say, hey, who's the hottest running back name in the country? Um, you know, you may not be able to go get DeMarco Murray or someone like that from Oklahoma because of his, uh, you know, ties there. But hey, Mike Hart's available. Why not? Uh, we have a phone call. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't know what you do here. I, I There's no stone that you don't try to turn over. I doubt that they turn over the Mike Hart stone. Yeah, that'd be wild. Though. I mean, that's just said we're in this point of college football in the Ohio State world specifically where like every day something just absolutely stupid is happening. So why not? Yeah, I didn't think the middle of spring break was going to be one of those times for us to kick back up uh, some snap judgments. But here we are. Um, the, remember how wrong I was in early December about saying that Ohio, Ryan Day had to urgently, urgently make his coaching moves? Um, yes. it actually applies right now because they're going to practice again on Tuesday. You can find quality control and analysts to get through spring practice and, and that's fine. Um, you know, but 
on April 14th and the 15th, there's going to be a transfer portal opening. You, you have to give everyone involved on that depth chart uh, a clear picture of what it's going to look like. Um, and really, you don't want to go through 13 practices of at some point, there will be installation and scrimmages. You owe it to you owe it to them now for them to have a full time position coach. But you may not be able to do that by Tuesday. Maybe Ohio State will. Um, that seems a little bit far fetched as we sit here, but that could happen. But at some point in the next four to five weeks, you're going to have to have somebody in place. Because after that, if there's lingering uncertainty and a portal window where there's no harm in putting your name in and then taking it back out if you want, you could create a whole host of problems with the roster in this insane world that we currently live in. That includes everyone. Even though Travion Henderson has talked openly about his loyalty to Ohio State, uh, the, the pull he feels through his faith to finish um, you know, his story and with this platform, with the Buckeyes, uh, the NIL opportunities that exist for both Travion Henderson and Quinshot Judkins, like any of them could find a better offer, just like their position coach uh, did in the middle of March. Uh, that then ex uh, extends. We just talked about Dallin Hayden and like the potential for him and his belief in Tony Alford's redshirt plan and sticking through all that through the development. And then you have two, you know, early enrollee freshmen who obviously were wanting to sign and play underneath Tony Alford with. You know Sam Williams Dixon and James Peoples, like the whole room suddenly then has a new decision to make because the rules as we used to know them don't exist anymore. So you there is urgency now that may not have existed in December. Yeah, isn't it great? Aren't all these just you know no just complete decimation of all rules and standards? Isn't it great? I just love it. It's so it's such a good thing for everyone, really when there are no standards of, of ethics and operations. And uh, I think it's great. I think people mm -hmm. should just do whatever they want, whenever they want, all the time. Yeah, uh, that's great. And uh, that's what you get. No, seriously, though, this transfer window that comes up one month from today uh, is now extremely important for Ohio State all of a sudden. Uh, and it, it's you just never know what to expect. But, yeah, you need to have someone in place. And Michigan has made this decision and, and picked up Tony Alford from Ohio State in what in a week, right? So um, it's not outside of the realm of possibility that Ohio State can act that quickly. Um, but Michigan also had a little bit of lead-in time where Mike Hart was out on a personal leave, and so I think they knew this was coming. And uh, I don't believe that these conversations with Tony Alford and Michigan started just last week. So um, I would imagine that there were some conversations prior to that. The question is for Ohio State, and and is there a guy out there that you have that you've had your eye on? And, you know, when 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 Ryan Day moved on from Greg Studwara after the 2021 season, we knew that Justin Fry was a guy that he was circled. It, it, you know, we talked about Chip Kelly back in December, like, hey, if this becomes available, Chip Kelly's the type of guy who maybe you'd go after. Is there someone out there that Ryan Day has his mind on already, or that he's you know been keeping an eye on? We'll we'll find out. We'll find that out quickly. It's not going to take long for for this to happen. I would assume. Yeah. Then you get into all the fun stuff with like university PR and listing jobs, and sometimes there are shortcuts around that. Sometimes there aren't. But you have to identify this person and and get them in place as as fast as possible. Like there, the clock is ticking for Ohio State, and Tony Alford has started it yet again with uh, just when you thought. That off-season coaching moves and nonsense were over. It spills all the way over into spring. What a fun time! Yeah, uh, for Ryan Day in a pivotal year. Before we wrap up here, like I, I know that this will come across, or that a lot of this video, this conversation may come across as like, "What the hell just happened?" Like, I don't. I, I do think that you know, a coach has to make a decision for himself and his future, and people should not um, be personally offended by it. I think like it, it is. It is a part of the job and. College football has changed so much in the last few years that this is going to become the norm. Like this is not going to be um, an outlier for very long. But uh, it, it's, I don't, I don't know about that, Burn, because the, the timing is still certainly very weird. But like the the lack of what we would call like loyalty to go flip sides and go coach at Michigan, the team that you've spent the last nine years of your life talking about hating like it, it becomes a it is a much different conversation now than it was 20 years ago where people um i i think that sense of like vitriol for your rival like was different um 
than it is now, especially on the professional side of things, not in the fan side of things. It's worse than ever. But um, as far as the professionals go, like, I just think that they view it differently. And so like we can say of all the places to leave for at this time, how could you go there? But like, I don't think that really connects with people who are in, in that position. Right. And so I don't, yeah. I don't blame Tony Alford for making any decision that he feels is best for him and his family. So, uh, but the timing when he walks back into Ohio stadium in November, like I don't think Tony Alford is, is going to get a response that would be indicative of the t- time he served uh, with the Buckeyes. No, uh, it- I think you're right. I mean, most coaches do view that through that professional lens and they're just going to change one polo from another. But I think the part that the only reason I was jumping in to kind of disagree is that they are professionals and they're bound by contracts. Like that's what's different than the wide open Western world that the the players are in. Like, and that's why eventually the coach, the players have to get to that point if you want stability brought to the sport, because that already exists for coaches with long-term contracts and buyouts that's why they're there to keep them in place and to prevent uh, you know unexpected situations roiling your your coaching roster in the midst of spring practice but you know if well that's why you have to make sure your coaches when they get new contracts in january sign them <laughs> or you sign and, them to the length of a deal that pre- prevents something like this from happening which yeah, yeah. neither I mean, of those things appear to have happened here yeah and I, I, is that standard? I mean, I, I, you, you're a little bit closer on this coaching side. Are there, I, because it seems like it's happened a few times in the last couple of years where people have had contracts they just don't sign on. And I, I don't know yeah. why they're not permitted. It's, I've been places where the contracts are never signed by anybody, period. Uh, you have memorandums of understanding that enable uh, the lawyers to keep working on contract language and allow for the schools to start paying them at the amount that's agreed upon. And there's really, I, it's sort of like <laughs> signing day with these guys. Like you, you, you often wonder, like if you're allowed to just start working or show up and enroll at a school, like why does anybody sign them and lock them in? Like, um, there are all sorts of weird holes and legal wrangling that go on in college football that make no sense. And this, um, is just the latest public example of that for Ohio State specifically. It's as you said, Berm, it's really fun to cover all that. You know, the NFL doesn't seem to have that problem. I wonder why. Hmm. We'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, we'll get there. Anyway, uh, surprise snap judgments coming to you on a Wednesday in the middle of spring break. Tony Alford is going to Michigan. Uh, What's next for Ohio State? Uh, We'll find out. He's Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you later.